you know, for, for every 10 people I know that wanted to be in the arts, maybe one is in the arts as, as, a, as a viable profession and who, you know, can use it to actually pay the rent and have a nice lifestyle. So there's, a, there's some responsibility, I think, has to be taken in art schools about that. Hi there, I'm Mario. Welcome to another episode of Design Interviews and Questions, where we interview designers from all around the world. Today, actually, I'm with Marion Duchard, an illustrator, and the first illustrator of our series. So welcome to Design Interview, Marion. Thanks for being here. Nice to be here. So, uh, if you don't mind, we can start with the initial question, which is... What made you become a designer? Uh, so you start with an easy question then, not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know why, why I just stumbled, stumbled into it. I've always drawn, so it was a natural thing to end up at art school. And then, you know, at art school, you have all these options, don't you? Whether you're going to become a sculptor or a painter or a designer. In a sense, you're kind of steered by the kind of work you produce. So I think... I didn't really know the whole profession that was out there at the time. I just kind of, um, you know, my work seemed to have more of a commercial kind of angle to it. So I think they kind of, my tutors at the time just pushed me towards commercial art, I think, more than fine art. So, but, it, you know, it was it was um, an inevitability. I think kids that draw a lot and don't stop drawing end up at art school and end up in the arts in some, in some um, capacity. So... That's where I ended up. And, and, and when when you realized that maybe illustration could have been your like job? Um, I, yeah, I suppose by the end of college, end of degree, um, my degree, I realized it was something I'd like to try and, and make a career out of. I think even then, I, I left college quite a long time ago. It was always you know, I was kind of advised, like, don't do illustration. It's a really hard profession to make a living in, and um, it's very competitive, and it's more people fail than succeed. So it wasn't like, you know, even 25 years ago, like it was an easy profession to join. But I, I think, you know, one should follow one's passion and dreams, and in a sense, if you think, well, I'll, I'll give it a shot. If, maybe if it didn't work after five years, I might have given up, but it worked, so I stuck with it. And, I mean, what is for you then illustration? Well, for me, it's a huge umbrella, actually, of, of different kind. Of, I, I mean, I use the word illustrator, but sometimes I've used graphic artist. Sometimes I've painted more than I've drawn. Or, I mean, now I mainly work in publishing, but that's quite recent. And um, but I think I don't mind the, the term. Illustrate means to illuminate and illuminate text, and it goes all the way back to illuminated manuscripts. And I quite like its history. So I'm quite happy to be generally illuminating text is what I think I in the main do, whether it's for commercial projects or whether it's for books. So I know sometimes people get hung up on the on the on words, but I think illustration is quite a big umbrella for lots and lots of different styles of, of work. And even within my own contemporaries we all call ourselves illustrators, but we're sometimes not really that comparable in our work. We're so diverse. I mean, from someone painting a building to someone making movies to, you know, someone painting still life, you know, we can all call ourselves illustrators. Uh, and I quite like that. And I mean, you, you now, especially in this moment of this global pandemic, uh, you're posting on Instagram, for example, uh, some, um, illustration regarding the moment what is for you illustration well uh, you know the thing about making pictures which is essentially also what I do is I mainly make pictures and those pictures should communicate very instantaneously we we as human beings have an insatiable appetite for the new in terms of imagery we're always looking for new imagery instinctively I think and we we're always see, seeing things that catch our eye and so I think Picture making is such a fantastic thing to be able to do. And mm -hmm. and I don't think I, I 
I'm necessarily a great social commentator. There's illustrators who are brilliant at doing that in newspapers and things. But in this particular time, in this lockdown, it just kind of feels like, well, it's a really nice vehicle to use to express how one feels. And it's, I can, I, I can do it quite quickly in a picture and it's easier than writing words for me. And I think it can reach a more global audience because it's a picture rather than words. So it's mainly picture. But um, I, I think, yeah, I think illustrators have really grasped this lockdown from what I can see. They're, they're flourishing on, on the internet because they're able to put their ideas out and show their perspective very, very succinctly and very, very um, immediate and very sometimes spontaneously and sometimes funny and sometimes sad. And I think it's a fantastic vehicle for global communication. Right. And this, I mean, illustration is a kind of tool for you also to express your feelings, for example? Like, I think, I think for everyone, again, everyone's different, but I think I do put quite a lot of person, I was going to say personal stuff in there, not just personality, but personal. And um, yes, I mean, I have this little character called Bob and sometimes he's me and sometimes he's my brother or sometimes he's someone I know, but he, or sometimes he's my dog or my son. But he generally, his experiences are taken from something real. And I think that's what makes um, illustration, or I think it's what makes good pictures, actually, is when it has a basis in reality and it's just turned into another language to um, to communicate. And when when you start uh, a project, how, how does it work, the process? Well, it depends if it's a person, because I, I work commercially and I work on my own books. They're, they're both really quite different hats that I have to put on. So if it's a commercial job, for example, everything's really quite set up in terms of normally the text is given to you, normally the parameter is given, the budget, the deadline, you know, everything's kind of done for you and all that requires is your imagination. So in some aspects, commercial work is easier because it's giving you a starting point, a subject and an end point. But when it comes to my own work, it's much more fluid and much harder because you are delving deeper into oneself and you're having to come up with an idea. You're, you're generally having to give yourself a deadline because although publishing does have deadlines, they're quite fluid. And so if you miss your deadline, no one dies. It's okay, you just go to the next deadline. I mean, ideally you try and make deadlines, but um, so they're, they're, they're quite different. And I think the latter is harder but ultimately probably more fulfilling because you're doing something very, very personal. But the, yeah, the, the, the process is, is never easy. I mean, sometimes you have little breakthrough moments and um, it comes together very quickly. And other times, I, you know, I struggle. I struggle. I rewrite stories over and over and over again. I redraw things over and over again. So, um, yeah, I'm not... Although my work looks quite spontaneous, that is part of its charm. You know, sometimes to to create that spontaneity is quite hard work. <laughs> or it's quite it's actually quite you know, you might be doing twenty drawings to get one drawing. So it's a little bit to get that quick drawing is sometimes not quite as quick as it may look, actually. Uh, is there a specific part of the process that you're really interested into? Yeah, or the, the, is the, everything. No, I think the, the, the part of the process I've always been interested in and I've recognised is really important is the process of working towards the unknown. So that's what I really enjoy is like having something I'm not familiar with, something that's um, new. It's what keeps me interested in doing new work. It's what makes me get out of bed in the morning and why I want to keep going because there's this idea that you – you know, still your best work around the corner and that you, the next job's going to be better or the next drawing you do is going to be the one. So there's this idea of self-motivation and I think self-motivation for me is about, is that working towards the unknown and, and play, which is for a lot of people very important. And I'd say I enjoy the process of play as much as the final, pro, final kind of end result. I really enjoy going on my messy desk and, kind of not quite sure what I'm doing and, and making some things happen because I think that's where new ideas come from. It's when you mix old things together or bring in something you just read or seen or, you know, even if it's just exactly what's happening now, the fact that I'm confined to my house 
and I've never worked from home in 25 years. <laughs> so for me, not getting up and out has been quite a big challenge to, to, to get up and come downstairs and just, um, you know, I'm working, my husband's working here too. I've got two teenage boys who are kind of working. <laughs> so I think all, all that will feed in. It's, for me, it's like a, a subject matter in a sense. It will feed into the work and it will influence what I do because that's where my my inspiration comes from, partly. But do you need a kind of like mental space when when you illustrate, when you draw? I think I think ideally, but because I I've always worked in a until quite recently worked in a shared studio where there's lots of people, and so I think you learn to kind of go into your own space rather than I'm not an illustrator who's gone off to some little room and worked by herself. And come up with ideas. I'm, I'm used to coming up with ideas in cafes. I'm used to coming up with ideas going on walks. And then when I go into the studio, I tend to just produce. And I'm used to people coming up and looking over my shoulder and seeing what I'm doing. So it's, in a sense, it's not that different working from home. I just have the dog licking me, and I have, you know, <laughs> my husband talking in interviews, and um, the kids asking for more to eat because they're always eating. So there's a few more distractions. But working in a studio, you learn to work alongside distraction and I'm quite glad that I can work like that I don't need silence or, or a kind of perfect space to work in as long as I can make a mess it's all right actually that's the only risk of working at home is we have some quite nice furniture <laughs> it's like I keep saying I'm really worried about like splatting some ink right right across like a, a Wegener chair or something like that there's nothing I can do I can't be that neat so we just take the risk <laughs> And ever happened that in your um, workspace with the other people, they did something, I don't know, and it was like a starting point for you to start to illustrate something? like. I think when you, you work in a shared studio, there's always, I'd say it's, it's that even though that you don't necessarily always collaborate, there's, because you're actually in dialogue or you're sitting having lunch together or you're, someone's commenting on something you're doing or, or they respond well to it, then I think you feed from that and it's quite healthy. I think we're sociable creatures and we generally enjoy stimulus of other human beings, which is why right now it's equally quite hard because I think, you know, we're having to find other means to to communicate and, and um, you know, show work on screen and talk about it. And it's you realise how important the physicality of seeing work and, and speaking with each other face to face is actually, I'm sure we'll all appreciate it much more after lockdown. Today, I mean, the the role of the creative, you know, is is more important in the society comparing with few years ago. And now also young generation are like pushing to start to do illustration or graphic design or whatever. Um, would you, what do, when do you see around you like young, students or generation of illustrators what what's your feeling about do you like what you see around you or I, I think I like I've always liked the energy of what young people do I used to teach a bit more actually and it was a real um what I really loved about that was kind of being seeing what the, the next curve would be I'm not teaching now so I don't see that quite so much I mean if anything I have a bit of envy for the youth because of the way they can um work and use social media at the same time it's quite it seems quite seamless whereas I think for the older generation like myself it's quite hard for me to the social media doesn't come easily and, and sometimes I forget completely to do it because I'm just so busy working it doesn't it's not a natural thing for me to think about I have to always think about it and, and in this particular moment I'm being asked to do quite a lot of things you know online and it's like it's a big learning curve for me it's actually quite difficult so if I look at the youth I'm kind of I kind of think they've got that those tools I wish and I wish I had those tools I wish I had the mental capacity to learn much much more than I can but I, I do I do like the there's a slight roughness to work at the moment that I quite like actually you know it's very you know it's quite it's high energy and it's um it's quite often funny or it's um immediate and I think the spectrum of where they can put the work is much wider than what than what I had originally when I left college it was quite a narrow market I worked for you know it would be London and London's quite big but it was just London really 
and now you feel like there's this whole you know it's like the world you can work for the world and that's very exciting I think for um, young people I'm saying that there's also seems to be a lot more designers and illustrators around because it's a very attractive profession and so I'm very aware that I'm very lucky that I kind of got in there before you know it's it kind of um, exploded in a way because it's I think it's quite hard to get your foot in the door like once you're in there it's great but I think I think if I was young the only downside I would think of being a young designer or illustrator is, is the intimidation factor on what you see out there that there's so much fantastic work and I, I think when I left college and even five to ten years after leaving college I wasn't really aware of how much was out there I wasn't aware of how much talent was out there and I, I wonder if it would have frightened me or whether you just you know embrace it I mean I, I really am amazed now about how many incredibly talented people there are and it's quite heartening it's a really positive thing to think my god there's so many there are so many creative people in this world and there's I'm always seeing things that really inspire me and, and, and sometimes even make you feel a bit rubbish because they're so good <laughs> but um so I think if you're younger, you have to navigate your way through that to find your own personal voice. And I think that is quite difficult. Whereas I, I have my personal voice. I don't have to worry about that. Um, I can just keep producing and developing it, but I don't have to find it. And I think one of the hardest things for young people is to find their unique voice. But that is what they really, really need to work on, because that is what, any, what everyone will always respond to is something unique and something different and something that they think I haven't seen that before. So. Do you think a fundamental role has been played by internet? Massively. I mean, it's it's a way of sharing. I mean, it really is an image-based, especially some of the bigger platforms. It's all about image, isn't it? And and it's um, it's it's immediate and it's imagery and it's it's a massive vehicle for your work. So, but you know, on saying that, you know, I'm I'm more successful in print than I am on on any kind of virtual screen. So. I don't, I don't often know. I think it translates into sales, but I'm not sure. I mean, I know I sell lots of books without having a really high profile on on the internet, but um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how it translates, whether people like to look at stuff on screen but then don't follow up. But I know people who have become very successful by starting on, on you know, some kind of media platform and then going into print, so... Uh, it's, it's still very new, isn't it, and to some extent? I mean, it's not. It's still a very young industry, and I think I, I, I'm not even sure how long print will keep its. You know, it's meant to be the death of print years ago, and it hasn't happened. But it's hard to know the next, you know, the next two generations whether people will just want something to move rather than it be static on a on a page. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't have the answer to that. I just have to do what I can do, which is stick to my strengths at the moment. So. What do you think uh, is said regarding the education in design and illustration? Because I think today's school are more and more comparing with the past. And now there's too there many. Are... Too many. Yeah. I think that there's been too many for quite a long time, only because but it, there's not too many if they... If, depending on the way they teach those courses. If you teach those courses and say to everyone who, you know, does a graphic or illustration course that you're going to become a graphic designer and an illustrator, then I think it's morally wrong because there is not the industry to sustain every single graduate. But if you say, do this degree, it's a fantastic degree. You're going to learn to see the world differently. You will become a more creative person. You can then look at many professions and apply that creativity to that profession then I think that's a responsible way of teaching and that would be the way I would say everyone should do an arts degree everyone should do an arts foundation regardless of what course they're going to do in the future because it's a way of appreciating the world around us and, it, and it's very great it's great for lateral thinking it's great for creative thinking but to say that everyone's going to do one of those courses and become a practicing illustrator or graphic designer I think is very wrong because it it, there's just not the capacity to, it can't sustain, the industry can't sustain it. And a lot of people are going to feel disappointed in themselves rather than thinking, I've done this degree, okay, I'll try and become a professional. If it doesn't work, what else can I do? And where can I apply this knowledge that I've learned in art school to something else and be satisfied with that? So, yeah, I think there needs to be some more responsibility and truth told in art schools about, you know, your potential of becoming a practicing artist. 
I mean, it's always been hard, as I said. It's, it's n just because there's more numbers, the, the ratio of those that make it has always been small. And, and um, you know, for, for every 10 people I know that wanted to be in the arts, maybe one is in the arts as, as, a, as a viable profession and who, you know, can use it to actually pay the rent and have a nice lifestyle. So there's, a, there's some responsibility, I think, has to be taken in art schools about that. And where do you see like the role of the the illustrator in the future? You said that you don't know what is going to be in like the next two generations, but if you have to uh, think about, I don't it. know. I can't give you the answer, but I can give you the answer to what I think about what's important in, in life, and that is that we need stories and we need pictures. And so, regardless of of the the vehicle that those stories or pictures take form in. We, I think we will always have them. For me, they're, they're intrinsic parts of being a human being as we tell stories and we look at pictures and we make music. Those three things you could argue are very, very important. But how, they're, how they go from the, the, the person who creates them to the audience will always change, you know, and it may very well change to the point where we don't recognize it. I mean, you don't have to go back too, too far back to not recognize, you know, how people used to make certain pieces of work or, or, um, or crafts that have died that used to be brilliant but they haven't survived but maybe there's another outlet for that or music has changed dramatically. I mean for me for a lot of people the difficulty is trying to make a living from the arts but, but the actual stories and pictures and music will always continue they just won't necessarily be in the forms that we know them in now so that gives me I think that's enough for me you know if I lost if print suddenly really went out of fashion and no one wanted to buy my books, I, you know, you have to move on. <laughs> you know, you can't say, well, that's what I do. You know, it's like, well, that's what you did and you, you did well. But, you know, there's maybe this is another way of experiencing pictures that people want, you know, want to see in a three-dimensional form. They don't want to see in a 2D form anymore. But we will never know. We just have to wait and see. Um, one interesting question that uh, is on the list is about perfection. And uh, I think in graphic design, uh, for example, is more or less easy to answer to it because you know you can judge like the alignment and so on. But uh, in illustration, I mean, a everyone has his own style, so it's kind of difficult to say to judge if an illustration Actually, yeah. is perfect. I think it is. I think um, graphics has always seen much more of a job, like a proper job, <laughs> you know, like a, one that you can measure to a certain extent. I know that illustrators have always been quite an idiosyncratic bunch of dreamers, in a sense, who make all different work. And you're right, it's very hard to say that's a good it's subjective, isn't it? It's very hard to say that. You kind of know what's a good drawing and not a good drawing, I'm saying that. But, but it, yeah, there's room for... There's room for, I mean, I don't like all work and, you know, I expect some people don't like my work at all and that's fine. But, yeah, to measure it is quite hard. I think you just have to say, does that, and it might, and, and someone's work may be appreci appreciated in one era and not another, you know, in a way that work can become dated or, you know, maybe it was very popular in the 70s and in the 80s it just looks wrong, you know, and that can happen with graphics too, I think, you know, but. But it, yeah, I've noticed when I've been doing judging, you know, especially like design judging, the, the graphic designers are always much more critical, like much more critical of if something's not right, you know, like the kerning's wrong or, or the space, or, or like they're very quite snobbish, I think, sometimes about and quite highly critical of each other about the work and not very, you know, not very generous. Whereas I think illustrators, I can look at a drawing and, and I think that's really not my cup of tea, you know but I can appreciate the craft behind it. And I appreciate that some people might really love that drawing. <laughs> so I think, I think they're quite, they are quite, the complementary crafts, but they're quite different. They come from different spaces. But do you think perfection exists? No, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> it's like, it's like one of those mad questions, like what is genius? I've just been like, no, no, let's move on from that one. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I mean, we arrived 
uh, already, unfortunately, to the to the last question, um, which is um, what what do you think the the designer or in your particular case uh, the illustrator can do for this moment in this global pandemic? Of course, not medically, we cannot help, but maybe in some other ways. But I, I think they're already doing a lot. I think they're, they're, they're communicating on a massive scale. We're just sending stuff out on a daily, minute-by-minute minute basis, recording what's happening in this moment in time. And I think it's going to be very special to look back at the work that's been produced in this time, actually. I mean, someone, I, I overheard someone saying the other day, oh, Oh, can I imagine how many bad books are going to be written in this time? <laughs> People have time off and they think, I'm going to write this book. So I can imagine there's going to be a lot of bad bad literature. But funnily enough, I think there's a lot of great art being made right now. And, and art does respond quite well, I think, to difficult situations. It's a way of putting something that is difficult into another format that we can comprehend and understand and, and um, respond to. And I think... You know, humour is, there's a lot of humour in the images that are going out now, and that is a way of helping us deal with a difficult situation. And and also a lot of advice and a lot of um, just reflection. I think what I've been trying to do a little bit is some images that are reflections, like there's a lot of really awful things happening right now for lots and lots of people, but at the same time there's a lot of positive things happening, and you have to balance those out and look at the positive things. And... People are saying, oh, let's not go, you know, when is it going to get back to normal? And there are a lot of people who are saying we don't want to go back to normal. We want to take some of these things that we have right now and, and take them forward. So like any experience, you know, any there's been a lot of comparisons with war. People learn very positive things from war, and we have to do the same with this, I think, is just turn it around. And, you know, once we get on top of the actual virus, I think we can – you know, look look at what we did in this time and how we used our time. I mean, so many people now in this moment have got time to actually do something creative, whether it's growing some basil in a pot or whether it's, you know, maybe picking up a pencil for the first time. Or they've got time, which is what we have an issue with always. The time is the big enemy quite often in our society that we're always chasing it. And in this moment, we have it. And it's how we use it and it's how we go forward with with um, what we've learned from actually having time and what we did in it. But do you think also this moment can mark in some way how people design or illustrate, for example? Well, absolutely. I mean, just from my own personal point of view and from people I know around me, we've already started to think about it. we're communicating with an audience in a very different way. So if you can't and it's much more personal, isn't it? And immediate people are putting videos of themselves out and we're talking to the world. And it's like suddenly you've seen all this work of people, you know the work, but you've never seen the person behind it. And I think, you know, we're we're always curious to see what someone looks like who makes the work. We have a natural, you know, kind of curiosity as to how where people live, what they do, you know, how, what they do behind the scenes. And this is like a massive big door that's been opened. And I'm not sure if we're going to go back behind those doors once once COVID ends. I think some of us that are out through the door might just stay out there. So I'm sure there's going to be some there's some people doing fantastic stuff out there that are becoming almost, you know, celebrity artists and good on them because they're they're really sharing the love and they're they're reaching a massive audience and that audience are reacting and giving them fantastic feedback. So I see a lot and lot of positive things happening with um, artists and designers at the moment. Well, thank you very much, Marion. It was really nice to talk to you today. Very nice to talk to you. <laughs>